welcome to yet another episode of Permaculture Healing. Wanted to touch base on something that I, I found on the property, um, what was it? I'd say probably three years ago. And at that point in time, I had been doing a lot of vermicomposting and, and using red wrigglers. Yeah, that's down, buddy. You're not getting that back. <laughs> um, so, and I kept on hearing this thing about this invasive worm. They're called the crazy Asian worm, the Alabama jumpers, all sorts of different names for this particular worm. Now, I have a, an example of a mature adult here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it just so you can see, because it, it moves very much like a snake. So that's how it moves around, and when you when you mess with it a lot, they oh. tend to they tend to freak out. Now, one of the things that I did want to mention here with this particular worm is the band. It's close to the head. It goes all the way around the body. Now, you would think that the worm's slimy, right? You know, night crawlers and stuff like that, they they have the secretion that they have. This is not slimy at all. It's actually very very firm. And when really freaked out they'll drop their tail so they'll they'll let the tail go but one of the things that they got their name for is how much they wiggle around and jump when they're really really bothered this one apparently doesn't necessarily feel very threatened but generally the the younger ones I've seen will thrash around and really like flop like a fish out of water um, this is not the case and for those of you that don't know you don't let them live now, there was a, an article done in Mass Live. I'm on Western Mass, if I haven't already mentioned that. There was an article done by the University of Massachusetts Department. Um, doctor's name, I don't want to butcher the name, it's a Dr. O. And what she had gone on to say is that the worm itself, yes, it's invasive. On a small scale, you know, gardening level that we do here, it's not necessarily going to be detrimental. No. Where the detriment is going to be is in the forest no. ecology. So where we are in Western Mass, we have a house, backyard, and then immediately abutting the property is woods. And that's what separates me and, and the neighbors behind me. And it goes quite a bit. So I want to take you on a, a, a little stroll here to show you what that worm will actually do. Because it sits in the top you know, three, four inches of the soil, and it decimates the organic matter. It crushes it. And I have an example out back here that I would love for you to see. All right, let's go on a little field trip. It's gonna be the easiest way for you to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get a roof house and experiment. We'll have some videos on that. Yeah, we live on a significant slope, so one of the things that we've done to deter the top water is created these ferns using the deadfall from the from the woods. I then got the idea to make these into oogle culture mounds. So I layered it with wood, branches, I put horse manure, I put piles of spoiled hay that I get from, from down the road here, and this was I kid you not, this tall at the beginning of the summer. So you get almost three foot. And at this point, in this moment in time, we're down to we're down to the wood. Like I can see the actual logs that we put into play here. So the organic matter has been decimated. 
And how do I know it's the worms? Because they're their castings look like coarse coffee grounds, right? So that's another telltale sign that you have this particular invasive species in your in your property or in your gardens or, or what have you. Um, so that's how I know that they're the culprits behind the mass that's not here anymore. There's one other section that I want us to take a peek at just to show you because our, the gardens thrived. There was no no loss in the garden beds. We got really good yields, minus the amount of rain that we got here in Western Mass. Um, and you can see you can see the texture of the soil mixed in with with the the worm casting. Now there's a couple of a couple of things that you can do. I mean, you just saw me deal with one effectively. You, you, you kill it. You can put them in a bucket with alcohol and let them let them expire that way. Another method that we're going to be using here in the garden is going to be to solarize the soil. So once the garden beds are, are cleared, we'll then lay down six millimeter black, essentially silage tarps um, over the course of the winter and the spring and let that soil like heat up. So what I've read and what I found is that temperature wise, they can withstand, I think, negative 30, negative 40 degrees, which is, you know, you're not getting rid of it, like, unless you're up in Antarctica. Um, but here, past 104, 105 degrees, they don't survive either, the worm nor the castings. Now, the good news, the physical worm will die in, in the first frost. The bad news are all the eggs that that one worm laid. Now, some thing to keep in mind here is this worm doesn't need another part. It's asexual. So it reproduces its eggs all on its own. So if you have one worm, it's going to spread fairly quickly. But the, the garden beds themselves did really well. The soil is, is really nice. It's rich, it's crumbly. Some leftover grass in there. But it, overall, it is a little more loose than, than regular compost. That's one of the, the issues with the particular castings. In the forest setting, it is going to create erosion in areas where that loose casting slips away with rain. So that is one of the ways that that's going to really impact the, the woods around us. Some trees will survive. Some other trees, maybe invasive varieties, may start popping up. Time will tell. But I did want to give you a little PSA announcement on that particular variety of worm that we found on the property here. And it's been three years. They travel, I think, 30 to 40 meters per year. So that's that's a significant stretch. So if you if you put put us at ground zero, 30, 40 meters out every year, the worms are already have already made their way in into the the forest of college, unfortunately. So I'll keep tabs on that and see what other methods I can find to help deal with them if you have them. Thanks for watching.